Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Titanium MiG-170 welder from Harbor Freight. So we're going to run this thing through its paces. I've had it for a few months now and I've used it both on steel and aluminum with a spool gun. We're going to show you some of both of those. And on the steel we'll go all the way from uh, 16 gauge or 1.6 millimeter all the way up to quarter inch thick material or uh, 6.3 millimeter thick material um, in a single pass with this machine today. And uh, we'll also hook it up to 110 as well as 220 volts. So you can see how it performs in all those situations. And I gotta tell you, it's worked pretty good. It's my second titanium welder. The first one I've had for, I don't know, a year and a half or so is this titanium flux 125. And I've had a few spools of wire through it. I use it occasionally and uh, I've loaned it out as well. And it's still working really well. So, uh, you know, hopefully this, uh, this doesn't disappoint in the future, but so far so good. Let's take a look. So I'll start off by hooking it up to uh, my shielding gas, and this is 25% CO2, 75% argon. I'm using this included regulator, and I'm going to set it right around 25 cubic feet per hour, which is a pretty good gas flow rate for most MIG welding. Now, it came with a couple of uh, spools of wire, one of flux core and one of hard wire, but I am going to go ahead and use this other spool of wire is the type of wire I typically use and it's a larger spool so I should be set. So after I get the gun tightened in place here I can go ahead and remove the nut and install my spool of wire. Now I can thread it through the guides and if you want more information about how to do this I have in the description linked a video that goes through a lot of detail about setting up a MIG welder. I'll just show some of the main uh, highlights of how to set up this welder so you can get going in a hurry if you decide to set up with this or most other MIG welders are similar. So I've got to feed the wire through the wire guide there and it'll feed um, into the other guide and then on my drive roll you need to use the right size so I'm using 30 thousandths of an inch or 0.8 millimeter wire and so I have that indication pointing out on my drive roll. There's also uh, other size drive rolls that come with it here, including this one um, with knurled rolls on that side for flux core wire. So it came with a, a good set there to, to feed whatever kind of wire we need. Now before I can feed the wire all the way through and out of my MIG gun, I need to remove the contact tip because it won't find its way through that little hole. And then I'm just holding the cable straight and holding the trigger down and letting it feed some wire through. And it'll come out the other end there. And once it does, I can feed my contact tip on there, like threading a needle, tighten it down. And I'm pretty well ready to go. I just need to slide on my gas nozzle here and clip my wire short. And we should be in pretty good shape. There's that gas nozzle there, so uh, that just slides on. Now if you notice, here on the tip of the nozzle, um, it's actually the contact tip is recessed in a little bit, which I, is not ideal in my opinion for a welder like this. Now, notice the sound here of shielding gas flowing before the wire comes out. That's pre-flow, and that's a good thing because uh, it'll have shielding gas in your weld right from the get-go. So I thought that was a really nice feature. Now it has a standard chart like most do where you can look at the type of material and shielding gas, wire, and uh, find some default settings. I found the voltage to be a bit high on most of the settings that were on that chart, uh, but your results may vary. Now this third setting here is inductance, and that will change the way that the arc behaves. A higher inductance level will wet out a little bit uh, more. Now that switch is changing it from two touch to four touch, which when it's on two touch, you just hold down the trigger to weld. If I flip the switch down here to four touch like that, I can pull the trigger, start welding and release the trigger. It'll keep welding till I pull it again to stop, which that's a nice feature if you're making really long runs, though most of the time I use two touch. Now it has these European style DINs connectors here. You can switch polarity. Uh, which is whether your gun's connected to positive or negative easily on the outside instead of having to disassemble part of the machine. And that's nice because you need to switch those if you're running flux core. Well, enough talking here. Let's go ahead and run some uh, welds with it. And this is on 60 thousandths of an inch or 16 gauge or 1.6 millimeter thick material. You can see I'm just using this oscillating uh, weaving pattern back and forth here and I'm getting a, a really nice result on this, this thin material. 
this is just another view of a similar uh, sample that I ran, the same, same thickness, uh, 16 gauge there. And you can see it's working, working really nice to give me a good fillet weld all the way along. Now as I go along, uh, notice that I'm just maintaining a nice short uh, distance between the contact tip and my work and a consistent angle and I got a really nice result right up there I got caught up around the camera a little bit and uh, missed the top of the joint but the welder itself performed really well now let's look at an outside corner joint and notice there's a gap in this and, and I'm just having to navigate right and I'm watching that trailing edge of that puddle and steering it through and I got a nice result out of that and that just shows that this thing is really controllable I think this is a good test to see you know can I weld an outside corner joint on that 16 gauge and do so successfully now I've moved up to some 1 8 of an inch uh, thick material um, or 3.2 millimeter thick and I'm just running right along another fillet weld here uh, on this thicker material. My settings are turned up a little bit higher. I don't, I don't recall exactly the setting I was using there. It's similar to the chart but I was running a little bit uh, less voltage if, if I recall correctly but I'm just keeping that uh, consistent distance from the tip to the work and a consistent angle and trying to move as steady as I can and in the end I got a, a pretty nice result with it right so uh, it, it worked out pretty well now cosmetically it looks good but but it's always good to test out welds a little bit and this is a simple test you can do notice the actual weld is on the bottom here I have it in my vise and I'm hitting it with a sledgehammer pretty aggressively and the length of this sample is preventing it from bending over but what you're really looking for here is if you can bend that thing all the way over and it doesn't open up the bottom side or the root of that joint, then you can feel really confident in your weld. And I, I'm starting to get nervous that I'm gonna break this little Harbor Freight vise uh, that I'm, I'm beating on here. So, so I don't know that I'll take it too far. I'll give it, a, give it a try with a couple of wrenches here, but you can see that whole uh, vise flexing there. So, so I, th I think that's about as far as I'll take it. But if it was gonna fail, you can notice I bend it over quite a ways into there we'll look at the back side if it was uh, starting to fail you would see it opening up a, a little bit here as, as we look around on the back side of the weld so you can see it's just solid closed there and another indication is that heat tin is consistent all the way across so I feel pretty good about it now let's crank this thing way up about the maximum we can go and we're gonna run some quarter inch which is really uh, pushing the limits of what we can do with 30 thousandths of an inch wire and and those are the settings I ran 375 inches a minute I mean I am cooking along here uh, moving fast and it's burning in hot and you can see I got a nice consistent result there on this quarter inch material now with most material thicknesses there's a range of settings that will work I'm going to turn this down a bit uh, here to you know right around 300 inches a minute and 19 volts and then run along and notice I'm just running a bit slower and even though this is you know transferring less power into the material it may actually be heating my material more because there's more time for that but uh, either way I got a got a nice result in this case too and and we, we could do some testing in, in a future video maybe to to compare those but uh, anyway let's take a look at some tubing this is 16 gauge rectangular tubing that I uh, used on a, a build um, here and I'm going to show you how I welded from the side to the the piece that's joining into it notice as I weld along I'm spending more time on that corner and just visiting over onto the piece that joins into it and by doing that I don't burn through and I got that result that uh, I was really happy with now plugging it into 120 volts here I got a voltage error on it and that's because you have to manually switch on the back to change it from 240 to 120 volts but it'll tell you if you have the wrong voltage so I'm not sure why it can't just figure it out and change it itself but uh, not such a big deal I flipped the switch I'm running 215 inches a minute and uh, you know about 15 and a half volts here uh, welding along on some 1 8 inch material you can see it's it's running uh, really nice on that just moving along uh, very even and uh, steady 
uh, all the way along that plate and see if we can't uh, get a get a good result here on 120 volts now eighth inch thick material is probably about as thick as I'd plan on doing on a regular basis if you only have a 120 volt outlet to run on but you can see uh, even though I was a little bit shaky the actual result from the machine is quite good so I'm happy with that now I did a full review on the spool gun in another video so check that out uh, linked in the description or on my channel um, but uh, we'll just weld here uh, with the spool gun on some aluminum, you can notice I use a little bit longer distance between my uh, contact tip and my work when I'm welding aluminum with a spool gun. And uh, then I'm just trying to move along as consistently as possible, though uh, I'm, I'm clearly not perfect on every, uh, every ripple here. But, uh, you know, just using that back and forth motion. Uh, I'll show you one more clip. This right here, I've moved up to quarter inch, and I'm kind of maxing out the machine with it. That last one was uh, one eighth of an inch or three millimeter samples. This uh, quarter inch or six millimeter uh, plate, you know, took quite a bit more heat, and I got overall a nice result. So that's another uh, thing that I was pretty impressed with on this machine uh, with aluminum and steel. Hey, so we looked at a lot of welding today and you know overall uh, the bottom line is it worked really well across the board. I was pretty impressed, especially with the price. So the reason I think that this may be one of the best welders that Harbor Freight has to offer, especially for a beginner, is it has room to grow, right? Because you can start off running it on 110 volts if that's the only outlet you have available and you can use flux core wire with it, which includes some flux core and hard steel wire um, that you can uh, go ahead and get started with. And then as you want to upgrade, you can get that gas cylinder and then you can get your 240 volt outlet and it can just grow with you uh, as you want. So, so I think it's really good from that perspective. I uh, really liked uh, pretty much everything about it. I thought it ran really well. I think one of the uh, unknowns here is how long it will last. I, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, so far so good. And like I said, I have that other little titanium that's lasted pretty well. So not, uh, not a lot of complaints. I, I'm happy to have it here in the shop. Um, and you know, it's, a, it's more of a backup machine for me, but uh, you know, it has a lot of, uh, a lot of good uses. So, so you'll see this uh, being used in some videos in the future, I think, and I'll be using it here in the shop to make some stuff for quite a while. We'll see you next time.